Hello, my name is David McTaggart, and I am a master's student at the University of Saskatchewan, supervised by Dr. Bill Billigatu. And today it is my pleasure to present my poster titled, Estimating the Stockpile Biomass of Sicer Milk Vetch Using Remote Sensing. And the idea for this project came out of wanting to develop improved perennial forage cultivars for stockpile grazing in an effort to help lower the winter feed costs of cow-calf producers. And in Western Canada, meadow brome grass and sicer milk fetch are perennials that are well suited for stockpile grazing due to their high nutritional value, persistence, and relatively high yield during the fall and winter periods. And our breeding program is wanting to test remote sensing tools for their potential to accelerate the rate at which we phenotype our breeding populations. And this informs the objective of this poster first to identify high yielding populations of Sicer milk vetch at stockpiling time, and then to identify remote sensing parameters with high Pearson's correlation coefficients with stockpile biomass. Now this project is an informed by a nursery of 29 diverse Sicer milk vetch populations compared to two Czech cultivars arranged in a completely randomized design. And in 2020, biomass was harvested twice, first in early July, and then the nursery was left to stockpile until mid-October. Drone flights were conducted just prior to each of those harvest dates from a 50 meter altitude using a DGI Matrice 200 V2 drone and a Micasense Red Edge MX multispectral camera. And I'd like you to please look to figure two for the four step process we use for examining our remote sensing data. Now moving on into our results, table one informs the first objective by which it identifies three Sicer milk vetch populations with a stockpiled yield greater than our Czech cultivars. Now one point of caution comes to the third place population that does have a coefficient of variation that is greater than our Czech cultivars. Now moving on to figure three, we're starting to address that second objective. And I want you to focus on that red rectangle, which examines the PCC values in relation to dry matter yield. And out of here, points of explanation are that blue indicates a positive PCC and red indicates a negative value. Darker colors all are also higher values. Now, figure four and figure five identify those multispectral parameters with the highest correlations. And the highest is coming from blue divided by near-infrared reflectance with a PCC value equal to negative 0.76. And in second place, we have RVI, which is near infrared divided by red with a PCC value of negative 0.67. So these now inform our conclusions. So first off, we have seen that we do have populations with a higher stockpiled yield in compared to our Czech cultivars. And secondly, that there are vegetative indices, particularly RVI and blue divided by near infrared reflectance that provide a relatively high correlation with a stockpile biomass. Now, I'd really like to thank those who supported my project both in the field and with monetary support. This made a huge difference in developing our results. And also please look forward to more results to come in the next year.